Okay, so we've been looking at all the different types of particles. We've got baryons over here, which there's many different types of, and antibaryons as well. And then we've got mesons, which are pions and kaons. Then you've got leptons, which are electrons, muons, neutrinos, and they're different antiparticles as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how uh, the charge and the baryon number, the lepton number, strangeness, uh, have conservation laws. And we're going to use those to see if different types of interactions can take place. Okay, in any interaction between particles, the following numbers must be conserved. Firstly, the momentum. Okay, so the total momentum before a particle interaction must equal the total momentum after the interaction. And uh, this is provided it's a closed system and we've accounted for all the different particles and there's no external forces coming in. Secondly, energy. Okay, and when we say energy here, we're talking about the total of the kinetic energy, potential energy, and the rest mass energy as well. Okay, why this? Because what we can do is we can speed up particles to a very high speed so they have a lot of kinetic energy and then we can smash these particles together. For example, particle colliders like this. And the kinetic energy of these particles that are coming in and they're colliding can be used to make new particles. So the kinetic energy is being turned into the rest mass energy of these new particles. But the total energy before the interaction and after the interaction should be the same. And in fact, in some interactions, when it looks like there's some missing energy or some missing momentum, this can lead to the discovery of new particles. For example, neutrinos. This is what happened during uh, beta decay and so on. There was some missing energy, and this was used to predict the existence of neutrinos, which were later discovered. Okay, other numbers that need to be conserved in any interaction is charge, baryon number, and the each type of lepton number, so electron lepton number and muon lepton number. Now what about strangeness? So strangeness doesn't need to be conserved in all interactions. It is conserved in strong nuclear interaction, electromagnetic interaction, and the gravitational interaction. However, it does not need to be conserved in the weak interaction. In the weak nuclear interaction, the strangeness can change by plus one, zero, or minus one. So it, it can be conserved, but it doesn't need to be conserved in the weak nuclear interaction. Determine if the interaction shown below is possible. So we've got an electron antineutrino interacting with a neutron turning into an antiproton and a positron. Let's start off with charge, which is easy to check. The neutrino and the neutrons aren't charged. Okay, so there's zero there. And the, on the right hand side, we've got an antiproton, the minus one, the positron is plus one, so the charge is conserved. Zero before and a zero after. Let's check baryon number next. So the neutrinos don't have any baryon number. The neutron is a baryon, and the, ant the antiproton is an antibaryon, so it's got minus one. So baryon number is not conserved, so this means that this interaction isn't possible. Uh, we could check lepton number. It turns out lepton number is, is conserved, but that doesn't matter. Baryon number isn't conserved, so it's not possible. What about this interaction here? We've got two protons co colliding together and is making three protons and an antiproton. Let's start off with charge. So we've got protons with a positive charge and a antiproton with a negative charge. It's plus two on the left hand side and it's plus two on the right hand side. So in terms of charge, that's fine. What about baryon number? So all the protons have a plus one baryon number and the antiprotons have a minus one. So it's plus two baryon number on the left, plus two baryon number on the right. So that's fine. Um, I mean, we don't need to check lepton number of strangers because none of these, these aren't leptons and there's no strange particles here. So it's all fine. It's all possible. So how can this interaction happen? Well, these two protons here need to be colliding with very high kinetic energy, enough kinetic energy that you can make the rest mass of the proton and the antiproton pair. Okay, what about this interaction over here? So we've got a muon turning into an electron and an electron antineutrino and a muon antineutrino. Let's start off with charge. Charge is fine. You've got a minus one on the left, minus one on the right, so that's okay. Well, baryon number, none of these are baryons and they're not strange either, so we don't need to worry about those especially. Now, lepton number is the important one here. So let's start off with electron lepton number because they both need to be conserved individually. So the electron lepton number of a muon, even though it's a lepton, it's not an electron lepton. Okay, so that means it's still zero here. Um, and we've got a, a positive one because that is a lepton. And there's an anti-lepton here because it's an antiparticle. So that's fine. You've got zero turning into zero. So electron lepton number is fine. What about muon lepton number? So we've got plus one because that's a particle here and a muon as well. Well, we've got minus one on this side. So that means a muon lepton number isn't conserved. 
this interaction is not possible. To determine if the following interaction is possible, the quark structure of the sigma minus is down downstream is given to us. Okay, we've got a uh, pi minus here interacting with a proton, and uh, so that's negative and positive charge, and that's turning into k plus and sigma minus. Okay, so what do we know about these particles? So the pi minus is a meson, and so it's not a baryon. The proton is a baryon, it's got positive charge. The k on here has a quark structure. Uh, it's a meson, so it's quark and antiquark, and one of those is going to be uh, an strange quark. So I think the combination here will be up strange bar and that should work so up is plus two over three charge and the strange is uh, plus a one over three okay so that has a strangeness of um, plus one okay using your data table you can figure that out okay then we've got the sigma minus here so that is going to have a strangeness of minus one because it's got a strange quark in there and it's also a baryon okay let's start with charge so that's fine so we've got the um, left hand side we've got zero and the right hand side we've got zero baryon number we've got the proton is a baryon and then the sigma minus is also a baryon so that's fine what about strain so we've got a zero on the left hand side none of those strange and we've got the positive strain and the negative strange which cancel out to give zero on both sides so strain is also concerned there's no leptons in here there's no electrons muons or neutrinos so we don't need to worry about lepton number so this interaction is how strange particles are produced and this is no, uh, known to be a strong nuclear interaction and this is how um, strange particles are produced. We have determined the following interactions possible. We've got K minus here on the left and we know that's a meson with a quark structure of strange up bar. So strangeness of minus one there. Okay, then you've got the um, pi naught which is also a meson which is up, 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 up bar or down, down bar. Then we've got a muon and a muon antineutrino. So let's start with charge here. So we've got charge minus one on the left, minus one on the right. So that's concept. Baryon number. None of these are baryons. There's all they're all mesons and leptons. So we can do not to worry about that. Okay, let's start with there's a few muons here on the right hand side. Let's check if muon lepton number is concept. So the uh, that is fine. We've got plus one and a minus one because one is a particle and one is an antiparticle, so that's also fine. Let's try strangeness. So we know the K1 has a strangeness of minus one, but nothing on the right hand side has a strangeness. So strangeness isn't conserved. However, that doesn't mean this interaction is impossible. It is possible, but it's only possible through the weak nuclear interaction because in the weak nuclear interaction, strangeness can change by plus one, zero, or minus one. So that it is possible, it can happen.